telling me that you have a way to defer the, the tax situation there? Is that what you're Yes, me? absolutely. Yes. And so the first one I was referring to is a 1031 exchange, which only applies to investment real estate. The second one I'm referring to is called a deferred sales trust. It works for primary homes. It works for investment real estate. It works for highly appreciated public stock. It works for private stock. It works for uh, collectibles, artwork. It works for Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. And it's literally, I think, the best kept secret. And not only that is it's new to people, but it has a track record of thousands of closes now, right? At over 25 five years, 15 times, no change IRS. My mind was blown and it's too good to be true. It's too good to be true. My CPA would have told me about it. My commercial broker would have told me about it. No, we didn't know about it. And Marcus Similichap until 10 years ago. And now we know it. But uh, I'll tell you, you made me a believer when we got the wire from our mutual client uh, who made this work. And it was a real eye opener to see that there are ways uh, that people can uh, can use the regulatory framework if properly structured to invest 1031 exchange dollars in things that you would not think uh, were like kind uh, to what they exited from. So it, it was very impressive. I got to say, uh, you are the first one I've seen pull this off. And I'm, I'm pretty... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, hesitant to believe in a lot of these kinds of things. So uh, it's uh, it's a it's a major feat for me to say, wow, <laughs> this actually really worked, and it was really cool. So using the, the deferred sales trust allowed them to hold on to those those assets. I mean, obviously they're you know the, the legal structures around them. They're not in their names, but now that chunk of money is a cow in their farm, a really nice cow <laughs> that does some really amazing things tax-wise and allows them to get the income that they need in order to meet their expenses. It's going to extend so, the, the, the length of time that they're going to have income by a, a pretty wide margin. The 1031 is a way to shelter your income when you sell the thing. The, the, the DST is a way to avoid the 1031 and not have to suffer the time penalty and free up your hand to negotiate at whatever time you figure is appropriate. And it allows you to sit on the sideline or it allows you to accelerate when needed and accumulate your capital. So I found you, um, just so your listeners know, on a podcast and I'm like, wow, this guy is really leaned in. He's articulate. He's very smart. When I worked in 1031 exchanges, we didn't really talk much about DSTs. We just used them to sort of round out a 1031 exchange. And I never knew that it could be the the um, only solution that you need for a primary resident to take you know their capital gains and defer it and put it into another property. That was like mind blowing for me to understand that concept, uh, which I, I learned on the podcast that you were on. Over our career, and during different tax periods, we've seen you know these tax avoidance, tax minimization, offshore, all these different different strategies undertaken uh, to minimize or avoid taxes. And then I can tell you that you know some of them are just not worth the trouble. And so I was skeptical. Uh, admittedly, I was skeptical. I, I thought, oh yeah, here we go, another one of these, right? And then they say, no, no, it really is different, right? So, so look more closely. We look more closely. We had, I honestly, two years of conversations two years now now we were being due diligence at the same time that we were doing due diligence but two years is a long time to be you know sort of flirting with the idea of and, and getting to know the people and getting to to really understand the transaction yeah long story short um you know, we, we got comfortable, although we are not tax attorneys, lawyers or estate planning attorneys that at least, you know, from an investment perspective uh, that, you know, it made sense to uh, sell in a highly appreciated asset, uh, get liquid, hold that in this type of, an, a you know, a, a deferred or installment sale type of instrument and then just be in a position then to do the most important thing. I'm probably stealing your next question, which is time. They say, well, you can't, you can't make more time. You can't, you actually, you can. The Deferred Sales Trust, in a way, allows you to lengthen the investment time horizon uh, for those assets after getting liquid, but before having to feel the tax impact. And from an investment manager's perspective, time horizon is the most important element uh, in, in investing. 
Yeah, so I'd say be early and connect with us and, and get and just clarify your vision for what you want your wealth plan to be. And that, that's just not just your wealth, but that's your time and your energy. That's where, where do you think the market's at? Like, do you think it's a buyer's market, right? Do you think it's a good time to buy? Do you think it's a good time to be in debt? And if so, just keep buying real estate right now. But if you think it's not, and perhaps you want to wait on the sidelines and have some liquidity, get out of debt and wait for what we call a deal to hit you over the head, then that's why you would use the deferred sales trust, regardless if you're a baby boomer or if you're a professional. Um, but essentially, if you connect with us, we're going to help you map out a, a, a wealth plan. And as part of that wealth plan, we're going to write, we're gonna write a, uh, a line down the middle of a piece of page. And we're going to say, continue as you are with the 1031 exchange or continue as you are with the deferred sales trust or a mixture of both. And we're looking at all of the pros and cons side by side and then let you decide what's best for you.